Okay, let's look at how we can put arrays and file input output into a program. So uh, let me open my, there we go. So we're going to make a bank program. Basically we'll have accounts and we can use the array for each one, what is the balance in each account, and then they could have like a maximum amount of accounts. Then we can use saving account data in, in text files and use the file IO for that. So what is the program going to look like? Well, when the program starts, we'll again just have the sort of done is false to start with and ask uh, basically while not done. And while we are not done with the program, we're going to keep running the program. So we'll talk about the file IO in a little bit. Let's just concentrate on how this works so far. So we're going to have several accounts. We're going to need to initialize those before we get into the program loop. So let's say something like a float uh, accounts array, and we don't know what size that's going to be at this point. We can set that to whatever we want. I would suggest making a named constant. So let's say const int max accounts is 10, or we could set it to five, something to make it so we can easily get to that limit just so we can test. And we'll set that up. Oops. And up. Oh, I'm trying to click on the arrow, but it's not <laughs> doing that. So we'll set this up. The size of this will be max accounts. And so we, this is how we'll kind of initialize everything. So account setup. And later on, we would load account data from text file here. But we're not doing that quite yet. We're just thinking just the program for now. So in the main program loop, we'll have a menu. We can say, um, let's say one deposit money, two withdraw, three open account, four close account, and five, we can just say exit. So let's go ahead and point this here. If they choose, let's see, choice is one. I didn't put a parallelogram for getting user input, but let's just say get user input store in choice. Choice is one, which is deposit, or choice could be two. Or choice could be three. Or choice could be four. Or choice could be five. So we'll arrange these. And when they select they want to deposit it or withdraw, we'll have to ask them which account they're talking about. And that means we'll, we'll also need to allow them to open and or close accounts. We could just make it open account and keep things simple that way if we wanted to. But if they choose to exit, then we just say done is now true and we can return to the main menu. I don't know if you can hear Luna, but Luna is now joining us for the programming. <laughs> Come here. Okay, leave then, whatever. <laughs> so if they are going to deposit, in my mind it would, it would say, which account are you going to deposit to? So deposit to which account? And maybe we could display a list of accounts. Now, if they have no accounts yet, we could say there are no accounts you can uh, do. Or we could just display a menu, or we could say, or z zero, or I don't know, type in 10 to quit. It's going to be some sort of number code. We could display account zero, account one, or account two, or account three, or so on. 
or let's just say zero to quit or go back. So if they do go in this menu, we could just display that they have no accounts and they can hit zero to go back. We can do this down here as well. If they hit zero to go back, it'll just take them to the menu anyway. So let's say go back to menu. That's just kind of shorthand so I can route these arrows somewhat nicely. <laughs> I guess these should kind of be the square arrows. These are all going to do their own thing. So let's actually break this out because it's going to be a little bit of work for each of these. So I'm going to actually put this uh, inside of my bank program path so you'll be able to see it. And we're going to make little jumping points. So go to deposit go to withdraw. Now in the C++ code, this isn't going to be any sort of jumping or go to. We do not use go to because it is it makes bad code. It makes spaghetti code. But we're going to go ahead and put those there just as a reference. I'm going to color this something else and color this some light color. And once they're done, it returns to menu. So we'll go like that. And then if we do open account, that's going to go to open account, go to close account. And so we can have these as kind of shorthand. Let's set this to a pink. I know that's a little bit harder to read. I'll try to find some lighter colors there. We'll do those. So after each of these occurs, which we'll go into how that happens in a little bit, then after it's done, it will return to the main menu. And so the main menu, that will just go through this whole thing, come back over here. We have to make the arrows look nice. There we go. Um, but each of these are going to eventually end up going back to the menu. Now this doesn't take extra logic to do. It'll just go back to the menu automatically because of the loop that we have. But it is kind of nice to diagram to show this is how the program will flow. So let's put this down here and clean this up a little bit. Oh no. There we go. Good enough, right? So this is the main program loop. And then we can come over here and define what is the deposit functionality, what is the withdraw functionality, what is the open account functionality, and what is the close account functionality. So since we're at this point where we've kind of split this out, let's just implement this part and leave these blank so that we can kind of see how they all work together. So I'm going to start. We're going to include IOStream. This is going to be for our CN and COUT. Include string. Maybe we'll need a string. Maybe we won't. FStream we'll eventually need for file input and output. And using namespace std. OK. We'll put this over here and put this over here. So first off, bool done is false. While we're not done, here's the main program loop. Let's also define const int max accounts is five and create a array of accounts to max accounts. And I didn't put this in here, but let's go ahead and initialize these because remember, if we don't initialize any float variables, integer variables, those kind of variables, they'll have garbage initially. So I can illustrate that for you as well. Let's go ahead and debug. And when we run this and it hits the breakpoint, maybe, let's look at over here, accounts. 
Item zero is zero, item one is one, item two is a very large number, item three is a very small number, and number four comes out as NAN, or not a number. So because it's just taking random, well, not like a technically random, but it's taking a spot in memory, and there could have been stuff there already in memory at that point, we haven't initialized anything, so it's full of garbage, we might want to clear it out. So to do that, we'll just say for int i is zero, i is less than max accounts, i plus plus, set each account to zero dollars. So reset each account to zero dollars. And eventually, we'll load a file to read account info. But we're not doing that right now. So this will reset our accounts. Over here, we can display our main menu. So we'll just do C out in line. I'll do a nice long line here. We can say number one, deposit. Two, withdraw. Three, open account. Four, close account. And five, exit. We need the user's choice, so we'll do int choice. Get their choice. And then we have this submenu. So I'm going to use a switch statement this time. We'll say switch on choice. Case one, that's deposit. Break. Case two, that's withdraw. Case three, that is open account. Case four, close account and break. And case five, exit. In that case, we set done to true. In the default case, they just entered a number that isn't valid. So invalid menu selection. Okay. So when we run this, make sure everything builds. I can type in some big number and it says invalid menu selection. These just continue going back to the main menu and five will quit. And we'll display goodbye. So this code is this loop right here. Now, when we implement go to deposit, that will go in this spot. So we have to think about what the logic here is. So over here, let's just think about deposit and none of these other things right now. When they go to deposit, it'll ask what account number are you going to use? We'll need to display a list. So that will be a for loop to iterate over all the arrays, or they can enter zero to go back. Let's say, user entered zero. If they did, we'll just go back to the main menu. So basically we don't actually write any code to do this, but we will return it to menu. And I'm just, because I'm lazy, going to make this point to that same block down here. Because or I guess I can make it point here, because technically this just returns immediately right back where it was. It comes back down to main menu. So this little bit, we'll just say C out, um, deposit, deposit to which account, or zero to go back. and we'll get their input. If choice is zero, well, technically we don't need to do anything. And otherwise, if choice is not zero, we'd say update account here. So I'm just putting a placeholder so that we can kind of make sure it works when we run the program deposit, and if I say five, update account here, or if deposit zero, go back. Let's just put C out, cancel, or let's say canceled transaction. So we'll run that, 
deposit, zero, go back, cancel transaction. So we don't have to type any extra code here to make it go back to the main menu. It just naturally finishes the switch statement, comes to the end of the while loop, comes back up here, we're not done, and repeats again. So, okay, if they entered zero, true, go back to the main menu. Next, we need to say if they didn't enter zero, but we also have a restriction on how many accounts you can have. So for instance, if I only have five accounts and I enter a hundred, it should detect that as an invalid account number and not let us do that. Uh, is the account between one and five or specifically max accounts? If that is true, that means it's a valid account. If that's not true, it's an invalid account. Display invalid account. So if it's not between those, it's invalid. If it is between those, we can then do our um, deposit. So we'll ask them deposit how much. We should also have an error check here to make sure that they're not entering a negative number. Is deposit amount greater than zero? So if it is, then we can add that to the account. So account, number, whatever they entered, plus equals deposit amount and we'll get into the specifics of the code. So if this is valid, we're good. Otherwise, we can just display an error message here too. Display invalid amount. Cannot deposit negative or zero. I guess you could type zero and add zero to the bank account, but who cares? And the easiest thing to do would be just to have these all come back and return to the menu by uh, really not adding any extra code. That's how this functionality would work. But if we wanted to use a loop to make sure that it was valid, we could also do that. But we'll just go ahead and make this point over here. These are not quite snapping the way I want. Okay, so this is a error case. We'll just make that annoyingly red. That's not quite what I wanted. Set text color to zero. This is error case. Just check in for that. And otherwise this occurs. We do that math and then we return to the menu. Oh, great. That, that doesn't look great. <laughs> do I, is there a box shaped one? I don't know. We'll just make this go all the way down and then come back up. Okay, so how does, how does this look in the code? Well, we are going to add that in here, update account. If we can change this else statement to check for if it's a, a valid uh, number range. So if their choice is greater than or equal to one, and choice is less than or equal to the max accounts. Otherwise, invalid account number. Okay. Now, something I haven't talked about yet is why I'm doing one through max accounts. Because with our array, Let's just go ahead and display everything in the array. We'll deposit, let's display it here, and display each account information. So we'll say account number i has a fixed set precision 2 and the accounts at that position. So this will display account information. We'll run that. I have a build error. It is probably mad that I did not include IOMNIP for set 
precision. We'll build that. So accounts zero through four are zero dollars. Now with our arrays in C++, arrays begin at index zero. And since max accounts is five, that means the last valid index is four. Now with the deposit, we said zero to go back and we're going to assume that I'm actually going to change these to one through five because most people who aren't computer scientists aren't used to seeing the number zero as an option. So we're going to actually display account I plus one and kind of hide the truth of what that number is. It's going to be offset by one. So count in the array is zero, but to the user, it looks like one. The last account in the array is four, but it looks like five to the user. So we're going to need to make sure that whatever the user enters for their choice, if it's an index, it's going to be choice minus one, because if they entered account number one, that's actually account number zero. So we'll do that um, to get the actual index number, which will be zero through four. We'll ask deposit amount. Let's create a float deposit cn deposit. Now, if I try to build this, it'll probably give me an error. Oh, it did not give me an error, but sometimes if you're declaring a variable inside of a switch case, it complains. In that case, you can just wrap this entire case inside of curly braces, and that will take care of any issue it has with declaring variables inside the switch. Now for our next error validation is the deposit amount greater than zero. If deposit is greater than zero, we can update the account. Otherwise, we have an error again. Invalid deposit amount. Okay, updating the account. We have an index number. We have the accounts of, uh, not function, uh, array. So we'll say array, or not array, accounts at the index they entered plus equals the deposit amount. So we have the accounts array. They've entered one through five. We change that to zero through four. The account at that index, we add on with the deposit amount. So we can build deposit to account zero. Um, oh, I did that, I said back. <laughs> deposit to account number one. $500. Deposit to account one, $25. Deposit to account two, $50. And so now those get updated. So we're not even thinking about the open and closing accounts yet. We'll get to that in a little bit. We're just kind of focusing on one type of feature at a time. Now, since one sub feature has been done, it's a good time to make a, com make a commit to back it up. So I'm going to commit this as bank program deposit implemented. And I could keep working. I don't need to push it all right now, but that's going to add. Okay, so I've made a backup. Now what will we do? We'll, we can go work on the withdraw, which is going to have similar functionality, except that we'll have different error checks. So for withdraw, we're going to say withdraw from which account. We again need to make sure it's a valid account. So we'll have this still user entered zero, but also a check between one and max accounts. Okay. And we can copy a lot of this here. So display invalid account if they enter something outside of that. This is false. And I didn't label this, but this path is true and this path is false. So they did not enter zero, so they don't want to quit. They entered a valid account number. So let me label these real quick and we'll have a return to menu. And that is just going to come back over here. 
So let's just make this point that way. If they have an invalid account number, then we're going to point that to return to menu as well. And then if it's uh, a valid amount, we are going to, or sorry, a valid account number, we are going to ask how much they want to withdraw. So withdraw how much. We'll put that over here and we'll say this is true. They entered a valid account. Now with the withdraw amount, we don't want them to enter a negative number or zero really, but also we might not want them to withdraw anything that they don't currently have in that account. So if they have $100 in account one, we don't want them withdrawing $200. Now, in some cases, the bank might let you do that and have an overdraft fee, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to say that that fails. So for our withdraw, we'll ask is deposit amount greater than zero and is deposit amount less than or equal to, um, let's say accounts balance. That became a big diamond. Sorry, that was my phone. Um, and so if they don't have $200 in their account, but they wanted to withdraw $200, we're going to say display invalid amount. So we'll say this is when it's false, when that fails. And then again, this will come out and return to the menu. Let's do that. But if it's okay, if they entered a valid amount, then we're going to subtract that from that account balance. So let me see how I wrote it here. Account number, account number minus the amount with whatever that it withdrawal amount, amount is. Okay. And then this is also going to return to the main menu afterwards. So we'll kind of adjust these and there we go. So again, it'll ask which account, check if that's valid, ask the amount to, oops, this should be withdraw amount. Is the withdraw amount greater than zero? If that's valid, then it will do the functionality. Otherwise it's just going to leave with an error. So over here we have do, 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 do. Case one is deposit. We can copy a lot of the same stuff for this first part. So let's go ahead and copy what's in here. And we will adjust it. So we're going to withdraw. Withdraw from which account? If the choice is zero, it cancels. If the a uh, choice is between the amount of accounts they have. That's okay. We'll have withdraw amount. Make this a withdraw variable. If the withdraw is greater than zero and withdraw is less than or equal to the amount in the account currently. So we can say accounts at that index because it's going to just store the, the dollar value. Then it will do this. Otherwise we'll say invalid withdraw amount. And did I put, I just put invalid amount in the flowchart. So then that should work okay. Uh, oops, this is still saying deposit. We'll say that is just withdraw. So let's deposit $200 there. Let's try to withdraw $400 invalid amount. Okay, let's try, oop, I meant go back, withdraw from account one, let's withdraw $50. Oops, I have the wrong math. It added that. So I need to make sure we are subtracting what we withdraw. Okay, deposit $200. Withdraw $550. So here we go, now it's at 150. Okay. We've implemented another feature, so it's a good time to back up. So withdraw implemented, and we'll push. Oh, 
I can't push at the moment. It's on the wrong branch. I'll fix that later. <laughs> okay, so we have the withdraw and we have the deposit. Where did my... there? Okay, so then how are we going to do opening and closing accounts? How is that going to work? Also, I wish I could write this to point over there, but we'll just keep this as color-coded for return to the main menu. We'll make this purple. This is main menu, just so we don't have to have lines crossing everywhere. Make that purple. So anything purple, go into the menu. But anyway, the way this program works currently is we just have five accounts automatically. Well, what if we want to say this is a new user and they start with no accounts and we can add additional accounts? In the real world, maybe we'd ask if this is a deposit or a checking account or a savings account or other types of special accounts. But we'll just let them add new accounts. We're not going to really worry if it's checking your savings. We're not going to implement functionality for that. So if they're going to open account, well, first we have to say they start off with no accounts, right? And we can implement this by initializing it to say that they have a certain amount of counts. So int account, let's say user accounts is zero. We can say that they start with no accounts. And then we go down here and start the program. So now instead of showing one and max accounts, if they only have a certain amount of accounts opened, we're going to display user account. What did I name that? User accounts, yes. So if they enter five, but they don't have a fifth account, they only have accounts one and two, now that's an error. And we'll update that over here as well. User accounts. So this will mean going back and updating some of our code, but that's just how these things go when we're um, working on stuff over time. You know, we don't want to implement everything all in one run. We need to be able to add one feature at a time, go back and make changes as needed. So user account, I am now going to update this and this. Now, as a side note, this and this code right here is basically the same as this check right here. If we were using functions, which I'm not assuming we've covered yet, but if we were using functions, we could make this a lot simpler and kind of split out that functionality so we can always use the same check to see if there's a user account. We don't have to write the same exact duplicate code. But right now we're not thinking about functions. This is just arrays and file IO, eventually file IO. So we're starting off with user account is zero. Well, let's say they want to open an account. What are we going to do? Well, we can basically just add one account. So if they are opening account, let's say is user account less than max accounts. Do they have the maximum amount of accounts yet or are they under that maximum? So if they are, um, let's copy this return to menu. If they have fewer than the max accounts, we can add to their accounts, which is just a simple number, user account plus plus. We can just add one to that. They now have one additional account. That's when this is true. However, if they have the maximum amount of accounts, we should display an error message. So we'll display, um, let's say, max accounts already, I don't know, already have max accounts. That sounds better. Already have max accounts. And in that case, we just return to the menu. But actually saying we are adding account we can just kind of add a little, um, we can just add one to the amount of counts they have. So we'll do that. Okay. One more thing with here, I wanted to make sure that we don't display accounts we don't have. So 
This is going to display all five accounts. We're going to also update this to display only the amount of accounts they have. So at the moment, now it displays nothing up here. And to implement this part, open account, let's go down here. So when they want to open an account, we will look at if user accounts is less than max accounts. That's fine. Otherwise, we have an error. So we'll say see out already have max accounts. Otherwise, we could say new account opened. And we will say user accounts plus plus. OK. Uh, did I accidentally name that user account singular? I did. We should rename that to accounts. So now I have to copy and paste this in multiple places again, which is a place where functions would come in handy. So I wouldn't have to do this everywhere. Okay. So let's go ahead and run. Let's say we want to deposit. It says we have which account, but we, can, we only have none. <laughs> Open account. Now we have account one, two, three, four, five. Already have max accounts. Can't have more than five. So that works out. Now, what if we want to remove an account? Uh, what if we wanted to remove our fifth account? Let's just go from the end to the beginning. So if you have five accounts, the account that gets removed is five. If you have four accounts, the account that gets removed is four. Just whatever the most recent account opened is. Now, they might have money in there. Maybe we should ask them where we, they want to put the balance for the closing account now that they are um, closing it. So let's think about this. We'll have, um, we're going to remove the most recent one. So removing account number, and that's going to be whatever their user accounts count is. So we're displaying that to the user. We should display balance is whatever that balance is. Where do you want to put the balance? OK, so we're going to get the user's choice. So we'll just say user enters new account number. And they'll enter, for example, 0 through 4 if they're closing account number, or sorry, 1 through 4 if they're account closing account number 5. OK. And so we'll have to do our error checks, but this will be a little bit different. Is the new account number, is it greater than zero? And is new account number less than, let's say user accounts. We might have to rethink some of this because I might still be thinking in offset by zero instead of offset by one. User accounts less than max accounts. Okay. Okay, so we're going to use this logic here where if they are less than the user accounts, because normally we're saying is it greater than equal to one, which is also the same as putting greater than zero, so greater than equal to one. But normally we'd say greater than equal to one or less than equal to user accounts, but that would include the account we're going to remove. So instead we'll say just less than user accounts. So if they enter a wrong number, if they want to put account five's balance in account five or in account six, which wouldn't exist, then we'll just display the error message and return to the menu. Cancel that operation. So we'll go here. But if they entered a valid account number, then what do we do? Well, we want to move anything that's in the account we're closing and put it in the account they entered, new account number. So which account are we closing? Well, if we have, let's say, user accounts is four, then they have accounts one, two, three, and four. They would be closing four and putting it in maybe three. So down here, user accounts is four. That's actually also the last account they have. So they're going to take the accounts array 
we're going to put the money in the new account number, whatever it ha currently has in there. So new account number. But we might need to also offset that by one because of our index issue. So let's say um, new index is equal to new account number minus one, because again, in the array, this is going to be zero, one, two, three, and not actually one, two, three, four. So we're updating this. We have this new index and let's also get the old index. Old index is equal to the user accounts. So it'd be account number four. We actually want account number three, right? And we'll have to test this out to make sure this logic is sound. So the new index is going to be equal to whatever it currently has plus whatever money is in the old index. Okay. So we're taking from the old index, putting it in a new index. Well, these are the account numbers, but here's the old index and new index. And that should be okay. Then we can close the account. There's not really a way to say just close a member of the array, but we can say, oh, they have just three accounts now. So then the program is going to stop here at the three anytime it's iterating through everything. Four might still be in there in memory, but it's just going to be ignored. So finally, we'll say uh, user accounts minus minus. We are decrementing that. And we'll display a message and then return back to the main menu. OK, let's write this and test it out and make sure this logic is correct. It's possible that I wasn't thinking correctly because sometimes I get mixed up with um, when we have uh, a list starting at one instead of zero. So we will tell the user removing account number and whatever user accounts size is. Now, as I'm writing this, I remember that we also uh, need to have something for if we have zero accounts. So is user accounts count equal to zero? Let's just redirect this really quick. If it is not zero, then we can remove accounts. But if it is zero, we'll just display you don't have any accounts to close. So that's an extra error check we might need. OK. So first off, if user account size is zero, we'll just display an error message. You have no accounts. OK, I'm going to go ahead and run that. And we'll just look at this real quick. Close accounts. You have no accounts. OK. Otherwise, now here's another problem I'm thinking of. What if you only have one account and you want to close it? Well, do we just, where do we put that new money? We just say we are withdrawing it, I suppose. I guess we could have that. Let's just focus on this main case for now. Assume they have more than two accounts. Let's just do else if user accounts is greater than two, if they have more than two accounts. And let's just write else if user accounts, well, this will just be else because it'll be user accounts greater than one. So that will be a, a special case we'll think of later. But if they have two or more accounts greater than or equal to two, then we ask them um, put this down here, removing from account number blah, Cur current balance is, we'll do fixed set precision to, and the accounts at the index we want. So let's think about this. User accounts, 0, 1, 2, 3, let's say removing account 1. So let's do int old account 
index or old index is equal to user accounts minus one, run and say old index. And let's just run this real quick. We'll, oops, back. Do open, open, close. Removing account number two, current balance is zero dollars. So I think that's okay. And we'll ask them, where do you want to put the new balance? Or where do you want to move money to? So account one through user accounts minus one, just as a way to show that those are the valid options. And we can also put this up here, withdraw from which account? Account one through user account or go back. And this is another thing that I kind of want to write a function now to do this sort of thing so I don't have to have that copy pasted everywhere. But if we run this, let's say open, 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 close, current balance is zero, where do you want to move money to one or two? And I forgot an end line right here. We'll do int new index. Well, let's say new, what did I name this? New user account, new account number. We'll get the user's input and then we'll create a int new index is equal to the new account number minus one. Okay, so then we're going to take the new index, We've got that, We've got the old index, account at new index, we're going to add that on. So let's just go ahead and say account number, new account number, balance is fixed, set precision to, and whatever accounts at new account number. Nope, nope, new index is at. Um, okay, adding the amount from the old index. Okay, we might add functions at the end just to show how we can clean this up a little bit, but adding some money there. And I would usually ask, do you want to continue, yes or no? We're not going to go ahead and do that. We're just going to assume they know what they're doing because the user always knows what they're doing, right? So we're going to say accounts at new index. We're going to add on whatever was currently at the old index. And we're going to say user accounts minus minus, remove one of the accounts. And do we got what we need? I think we do so we can build and run this. So let's test this out thoroughly. We'll open some accounts. Let's do four accounts. We'll deposit into account one. This is actually the wrong number. This should be four. Now let's go fix that bug. <laughs> because again, when we were asking which account to put the money into, we were not including the last most account. Okay, three, 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 three. Deposit a hun into account one, a hundred bucks. Deposit into account two, two hundred bucks. Deposit into account three, three hundred bucks. Deposit into account four, four hundred bucks. So now we have money. Let's try to close an account. Removing account four, current balance is four hundred. Where do you want to move the money? One through three. Let's try to move our four hundred dollars into account three. Now account three has $700, so that looks correct. Okay, what happens if we only have one account left? So down here, if we have one account left and we're going to remove it, if we have a balance of something greater than zero, maybe we should just say you have to manually withdraw that. So if the going to have to add on to this a little bit more. Do, 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 do. We'll kind of clean that up as much as we can. Is user accounts equal to one? If that's the case, well, we'll just tell them uh, next thing is accounts at position zero equal to zero. <laughs> If it's empty, we can remove it. If it's not empty, then we won't let them. 
Is the count equal to one? No, we have more than one. Is it equal to, is the account equal to one? Yes, okay. Now is it zero? If it's equal to zero dollars, we can destroy the account. Otherwise we'll say cannot close account with balance. So in that case, we'll go over here. If the account amount is not zero, Otherwise, we've got to move this guy over some more. Got to move this over there. This is going to be a really nice flowchart because I didn't think of these edge cases beforehand. Um, if they have zero dollars, we'll just say user accounts minus minus. We're okay with closing that account because it is empty. So point that there and point that there. And true in this case. Okay, so. In here, we have counts greater than or equal to two. This is basically, we only have one account left. If the accounts at position zero is equal to zero, we can remove the account. Remove the account, user accounts, minus minus. Otherwise, if you have money in there, we can say cannot close account with balance. And then, that's it. Go ahead and run. Let's say deposit. No, oh, we don't have an account. We have to open our account. We have to deposit a hundred bucks and then try to close it. Oh, it closed it. Oh wait, did we not? Did I do that wrong? I put the wrong account number. Okay, I'll try that again. Open account, deposit to account one, a hundred bucks. Close account. Cannot close account with balance. Okay, let's withdraw. 100 bucks, it's zero. Close account, accounts are closed. And there you go, we have that. So again, we should back up our changes. I'm going to go ahead and do that. We added open and close account functionality. And now we get into the weird part of file IO. So when I run this, I have to create new accounts every time. It's kind of annoying. It makes testing difficult. And also at, for a user, they're not going to want to type in their stuff every time they enter an ATM. So we need to have some sort of data file. We're not going to start with a data file in our directory. So we need to first think about saving it. So in here, we're going to end up saving a text file. And the best place to do that is at the end of the program while it's quitting. Save bank data. So let's create an output file stream. Save file. And we can open up, let's say, bank.txt. Save file.close. We can close it at the end. And what are we going to output? And how do we want to output it? So for instance, if we have it all structured in a way where we know the structure always is going to work this way, so we always have perhaps account zero, account one, account two, account three, account four, then we know we can load in zero, one, two, three, four. We can just tell it to hard code, read zero, then read one, then read two, then read four, or yeah, three and four. Um, we do also want to keep track of how many items are in the user accounts. So that might be the very first thing we put. Like the very first item saved should be user accounts, and then the account balances, whatever it is. So we're going to, at the end, output save file, the user accounts, and let's go ahead and do inline. And we want to output the balance of each account. So we're going to copy our function or our, our for loop that displays everything and modify it. So this iterates over all user accounts. I don't really want it output like this. I just want to output it as a piece of float data. 
So save file, oh, we'll comment that out for reference. Save file will output accounts at position I and new line. So when we run, I can say deposit, well, I have nothing, open account, open account, open account. Deposit to two, let's put 100. And so that's our current account information. Let's go ahead and exit. And now when I look in here, we have bank.txt. And I have a bunch of temporary files because of that diagram tool. Let me close that, it'll look a little bit nicer. So we have bank.txt. I'm gonna open that with a text file. And here we have the data. This is the amount of accounts. This is account zero, account one, account two. Or to the user, it's account one, two, and three. So we know we can read it in the same order coming back. So let's go ahead and create an input file stream. So we want to load this data in right here when the program first starts. So input file stream, load file, bank.txt. Okay, we know the very first thing we're gonna load in is the amount of user accounts. So we're going to load file input into user accounts. Okay, now we have the amount of user accounts. We can write for int i is zero, i is less than user accounts, i plus plus, because we need to iterate zero, one, two times, you know, however many times we have an accounts for. Load file into the accounts at position i. So as we go through it, Let's uh, just modify this and we'll step through with the debugger. So we'll start the program. Oh, the debugger didn't catch for some reason. I wonder why. Oh, okay, we'll just skip that for now. But when I do run this, we can see we have the same numbers. It used a for loop to load three times, one, two, three, and loaded in each of the data values. Now, if I had more in here, it's not going to load that last one because it's not, it only counts up three times with that for loop. So every time we run the program, it'll now have the new data. So let's say we deposit another 50 bucks into the first account. Now we exit. This is, it has update, so we reload and it's now at 250. Build again, we can withdraw from account two, let's get 12 bucks. Exit, and here are the updates. Or we can close an account. We're gonna put that into account number two. Exit, there we go, reload. We only have two accounts. Let's open another maximum amount of count accounts. Those are all zero, we'll just exit. And there we go. So we have our accounts, all five of them, and we have a five as a counter up top. And that's how we can basically save our file in a structured way so that when we load it back out, we know exactly how to parse it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the bank program. I'm not gonna go ahead and add functions since that's maybe something else we could do as a future video. But this is our example program for how to make a little bank ATM or something and it's all in main, yay! It, once we have functions and classes, it can be a lot better, but that's an example.